and I think we're live. So hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nikki. I'm an author and editor and I post videos here on YouTube about writing, editing, reading and all the other things I love. And we're here for reading today because it's the end of the month or yesterday was the end of the month and it's time to wrap up what I've been reading during September. So let me get rid of this banner first of all. There we go. So it's been actually a very quiet reading month for me in many ways. I mean, sometimes if you watch my previous videos, you'll know I get through 20-ish, 18 to 22 books on average a month. Uh, this month is considerably less. I've only got eight to talk about. The main reason for that being that I read the new Ken Follett book, which is over 800 pages. And that one took me a week. Plus, I've been really busy and flat out this month. And it's kind of cramped my reading time a little. I've still been reading every night, but I've lost a little bit of time here and there. So I haven't gotten through things as quickly as I normally would. But we've still got eight to discuss. Um, and I'm still just about on track for my Goodreads goal. As long as I get the momentum back up a bit in October to December, I will hit that 250. I think I'm at about 198 so far. So um, fingers crossed we can get there. But let me for now talk about the books I've read during September. So first up, I read The Antiquary by Sir Walter Scott. So this is a classic. It's a book that uh, my mother sent me just as a random gift. She ordered a few books for me because she spent some money on my sister recently. So um, I've read a few Walter Scott novels before, Rob Roy, um, Ivanhoe and the like. So um, I sometimes find him a little bit wordy and I do struggle now and then with that Scottish phonetic dialect. <laughs> But uh, even so, I really enjoyed The Antiquary. It's still got that Scottish dialect to tackle, but in terms of the story, I found it a really enjoyable piece. It's about a young man who's traveling in Scotland. Uh, he meets up with this, um, the antiquary of the title, uh, a man who's devoted to study. Um, they become friendly because they're both scholars. And as the story progresses, it turns out the young man has a secret and it's the, the revelation of that secret um, and to do with it, a sort of mystery in the community and uh, something hidden in the past that makes up the story. I don't want to say too much and spoiler it. But um, for me, this was a four and a half star read. Um, as I said, it's only really that slight difficulty over the phonetic dialogue that is the issue for me. But it's a really enjoyable story and not quite as stodgy and heavy going as some of Scott's other novels as well. It's slightly shorter than some of the others. So if, if you're new to um, Scott's writing, this might be a good one to start with. Uh, next up, another classic, a modern classic this time, I read The Princess Bride by William Goldman. Uh, interestingly, I'd never read this book before. I know the movie, of course, but I'd never gotten around to reading the novel. So when I saw it for $7, I think it was, in the bargain bookstore in town a few weeks back, I decided to grab a copy. This was a four-star read for me. Overall, it was entertaining. Um, the movie is actually pretty close to the book, so there were no surprises really for me. You know, I kind of knew what was going to happen, and even some of the dialogue yeah, was pretty pretty similar. So um, it was entertaining, and I'm, I'm glad to have finally read it and to have a copy for my shelf. For those who don't know this story, this is kind of a, a fairy tale ish story about Princess Buttercup, who um, is going to wed the heir to the throne, but who is actually in love with her stable boy, um, who becomes a daring hero, of course, to rescue her. Um, next up, I read, skimming down my list, Practical Korean by Samuel E. Martin. I bought this book because the Korean books I have at the moment, I had one, I've got one that's uh, Central Korean Grammar, but that's kind of assumes you already have a good basic um, working knowledge of Korean. Um, so it's a tiny bit too advanced for where I am at the moment. I then got another one called, I um, can't remember what it's called now, but it's another book on Korean anyway. And that one's fine, but the issue I had with it, it is simpler, but it works in topics. And so it spread out the grammar information throughout the different chapters, but there's no index to tell you where those bits of grammar information are. So if I'm trying to write a letter in Korean and I need to check something about uh, how to do adjectives or something like that. I have to skim through that entire book until I find the section that I need to refer to. And that was just not working for me. So when I saw this book, I decided to get it because it does have a simple index that tells you where the basic grammar sections are. 
So at least I can quickly reference and look up something if I need to check it while I'm writing in Korean. So uh, for me, this is four stars. Um, I'm not keen on the romanization reliance of some of the text, but uh, it is, as I said, a quick and easy way for me just to look something up if I need to. So next up, the book I mentioned earlier, The Kim Follett's um, The Evening and the Morning. So this is a prequel to The Pillars of the Earth, which is one of his most famous books. It's historical fiction um, set in Dark Ages, medieval England. This was a really enjoyable read. Um, I would say you don't have to have read Pillars of the Earth to be able to read this book. There is a, obviously reference. It kind of ends where Pillars of the Earth is taking off, but um, you could read them completely independently. It's a really good story. The characters are interesting. They held my attention. Um, there was plenty of action and drama going on to keep me turning the pages. And what I really love about Kim Follett's prose is he manages to get across the sense of period and place with very little info dumping and in a prose that is really readable. It's you can really like soar through this prose. It doesn't bog you down even. So even though the book is long and it takes a while to get through it, uh, it's it never feels heavy going or any kind of slog to read it. So it was a five star read for me. I, I received this one as an arc from the publisher and um, really enjoyable, really loved going back into his um, historical world again. So moving along, um, I read Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. Um, this one I borrowed from the library. And because as you, if you may remember, if you watched my videos from wrap up from the end of August in the TV film one, I watched My Girlfriend is a Gummy Hole, um, Korean drama series. So that's what made me decide to read this book. I'd seen it around and I decided to give it a go. Interestingly, I think there's been quite a lot of influence of that TV series on this book. It's not the same, um, it's different, but uh, I can, there's a reference to the series at one point and I can definitely see it has um, influenced the author in what she's written. Uh, overall though, this was a four star read for me. It was enjoyable. I liked the way she used the Korean folklore and twisted it a bit uh, to create her own story. The characters were interesting. Um, I thought there was some decent development between them and the relationship didn't feel too forced or sudden. And I definitely would go on to read the second book in this series that focuses I believe on a couple of the secondary characters from this first one. So next up was Art is Everything. Um, I'm not going to attempt to say this person's name because I'm just going to make a hash of it. Uh, I would just say it's by Y.M. Murray. I received this book from NetGalley um, and it is an interesting piece. I gave it three and a half stars in the end. It's a very experimental style of fiction. The author is um, basically telling the story of an artist and it's told through that artist's tweets, um, online postings, um, and it's it's not easy reading because of that. It took me quite a long time to get into the book because of that style of the prose. It felt a very disjointed to me at first. I did come to appreciate it more as I went through and I, I can certainly, the reason I gave it three and a half stars is I can see what the author was trying to achieve. Um, it was definitely interesting in that regard, but it just didn't 100% work for me. But if you like experimental avant-garde style fiction, um, definitely check it out. Uh, I did learn a few things actually, I would say from this book too, because at one point the um, one of the posts was talking about Pretty Woman and how the original script was completely different um, than how the film ended up which I'd never realised, and I actually Googled it afterwards to find out if that was true, and it is. Uh, it was a lot of a darker, grittier, less feel-good story originally compared to how it ended up. Uh, so I did pick up a few bits of interesting knowledge and facts along the way from this read. Next up, back to a library boring. Uh, I read The Memory Police by Agawa Yoko. Um, this was an interesting piece. I gave this book four stars. The premise is it's kind of almost like a 1984-ish world. There's a lot of kind of police state vigilance going on, but it's almost as if Haruki Murakami had written 1984 because it's also a kind of uh, magical realism running through it. The basic premise is that every so often something disappears from memory um, and the memory police are the ones who go around and make sure all evidence that that thing ever existed is destroyed. 
Um, so in some ways it's a bit, I don't know if any of you have read If Cats Disappeared from the World. It's a bit of a similar idea in some ways that something's just disappearing like birds or uh, photographs. Um, and the story revolves around a, a young woman and she ends up meeting people. Her mother was someone who could remember. There's always, mostly people do forget, um, but there's always one or two people who can remember what's missing. And she becomes involved with some of those people um, and those people are wanted, of course, by the memory police because they're aberrations who can remember things they shouldn't be remembering. I'm not going to say too much more because I don't want to spoil it. But I would say the reason this book gets four stars and not five from me, I loved the premise. Um, I liked the writing style, but I struggled with the fact that there wasn't good explanation at times for how things work. Um, how does how do the memories disappear? Um, and in particular, but there was a few, there were a few other questions I had during the book that were just conveniently not explained and we just had to accept them. And that I found that a little bit jarring. I kind of wanted to understand better how the world worked. Um, why had this started happening? What was causing it? Um, how did it take effect? That kind of thing. But um, it was interesting, but I just kind of was missing that extra layer of explanation and detail. And finally, the last book I read for September is another NetGalley read. It's called An Eye Novel by uh, Mizumura Minai. And this one was really interesting. I gave this one four and a half stars. It's a semi-autobiographical work in some ways about a young woman who uh, was born in Japan, but her family moved to America when she was young. And she's always felt a bit out of place both there and using English as a language and she is keen to return to Japan and the action takes place within a single day in which she's trying to break the news to her family that she wants to return to Japan while reminiscing over um, how she ended up there and some key events in her life. This was a really interesting work. I thought it had a lot to offer emotionally and thought-provoking ideas as someone who's moved country myself, I could definitely relate to some of her feelings. Um, for me, I moved from an English speaking country to an English speaking country. So you don't have that language element that she had, but um, still some of the things I could really relate to in her feelings and how she was approaching her new life and looking back on the old life and looking forward in a way to return to that old life, which considering she was a child when she left Japan, some of her feelings towards going back, I think are perhaps, uh, a nostalgia rather than a real memory or sense of um, what it would be like now but uh, definitely worth reading if if you're interested in a sort of thought-provoking look at what it's like to move countries and to feel that longing for for home and for where you came from so as i said it is a short month i'm already done with my books for september i'm hoping to get through a few more in october i was a bit disappointed today because um, I've been eagerly awaiting V.E. Schwab's new novel, The Invisible Life of Adi LaRue. And according to my local bookstore, it was going to be out today. But when I checked up yesterday to see the prices and things, it's now been pushed back to the end of the month, which is a really upsetting. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to getting it and starting to read it soon. But I will have to wait. Um, I contemplated ordering it from England, but with the postage delays at the moment, I don't think I'd get it. That much quicker so I may as well wait I might drop into the bookstore tomorrow and just double check with them it's definitely going to be the 28th now um, in the meantime I think the Lee Bardugo new release is out next week still I haven't seen any change in date to that so far so we'll wait and see uh, what happens with that one but hopefully I can get that one I'm currently reading two NetGalley books one of them I'm hopefully will finish tonight or tomorrow at the latest and then I've got one more waiting and that's actually it at the moment, because I've finally caught up with my TBR pile, which hasn't happened for quite a long time. But if I'm not able to get any new ones in the meantime from Nick Galley, or if these ones I want to buy haven't come out, I will perhaps do a few more rereads. Um, oh, that's one, actually, one. I read two more books this month. I lie, I read 10 books this month, but two of them are not listed on here because they were rereads. And I just decided to reread them for fun while I had time. And that was uh, The Greyfriar, which is the first book in the Vampire Empire series by Clay and Susan Griffith, which is a, a big favourite of mine. And I also reread another huge favourite of mine, which is Vicious by V.E. Schwab, 
which is my third time reading this book and um, I still love it just as much as the first time. It's such an awesome read. So definitely check out those two if you haven't read them. Um, Vicious is a kind of anti-superhero story or a kind of a dystopian superhero story maybe. And The Vampire Empire is a paranormal tale set in a kind of alternate history with steampunk elements. So if that sounds like your sort of thing, definitely look up that series. So I will end there for today, but I look forward to seeing you all again soon. I'll be back at the end of October with my TV and film and book wrap ups again. And I have some other content that will be posted, uh, a couple of other videos coming out during October before then. So I will close there for now, but I look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Bye for now, everyone.